Welcome to the Big Honker Podcast, brought to you by Pacific Game Calls. I am Jeff Stanfield with the world-famous Andy Shaver. And since this is coming out next week, because we're stacking them up, this is the BA Lesser Call. Showing it to all the people on the great uh, YouTube channel, brand new from Pacific Calls. You should have bought one at Squad Fest, but it is now... After Squad Fest. After Squad Fest, so I can show you now. It's over there. Sounds great. Look at the shirt Andy's wearing. That's the first family of waterfowl. It has also come out on YouTube. Check us out on the Big Honker podcast page on YouTube at our channel, not page, channel, at the first family of waterfowl. Story behind Stanfield Hunting Outfitters. And today, from the great city of... Fond du Lac. You didn't even give me a chance to fuck it up. Fond du Lac. Fond du Lac. Wisconsin. You almost made it. You almost made it. Fond du Lac. Fond du Lac. One sort my, my conservative friend, the Wisconsin Turkey Commander, Lauren Voss. Lauren, how are you doing, sir? Just great. Up on this side of the grass, yeah. <laughs> That's a good place to be sometimes. That's kind of where you want to stay, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think there's any Democrats in heaven? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did think a little bit. Not any Democrats in uh, 2023 yeah. or 22 for sure. Well, see, actually, I took the C out of that. Democrats? Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's what I use, yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's it's a ride. It's unbelievable what's going on, and people don't understand. But the, the problem is, is when you're talking to them, go out and talk to your driveway. Yeah. I mean... We there's there's nothing it doesn't hit anything when it hits the ears. There's nothing. We in that. we don't have so. a lot of that where we live at, thank God. But the people that I that that I'm friends with that do deal with that, they just talk about how frustrating it is. The people will not turn off ABC, NBC, or CBS, and they can't think for themselves. They just you know, by gosh, everything the media tells them, and that's the problem. We need a media the the media in our country to change and do what they're supposed well, to do. Actually, I think a guy could make a multi, you could be a multimillionaire if you could develop an app for, for television that every time Biden comes on, it turns off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw he got heckled today. I saw a minute ago before we got on here on Twitter in the Rose Garden, he was given, or in the backyard, wherever the hell he's at, he was giving a speech and somebody was heckling him. They should. It don't do no good because he don't, he don't know what he's talking about. It's not like you're dealing with Trump or even Obama who, who, who is at there least, mentally? yes, that you could speak to and they could at least have a conversation. Everything he does, every speech he gives, is pre-done. I mean, the fucker can't even read his teleprompter right because he repeats himself where it says, repeat, the, repeat line. the line, repeat the line. I mean, he's a dumbass. But he's, so it doesn't do you any good to heckle him. He don't know what he's doing. He goes on vacation. They showed him this week riding his bicycle and people were cussing at him and flipping him off and, you know, asking him where his training wheels were and stuff. Nobody respects the man. No. Especially no. when well, you're in I don't know how old you guys are. I'm actually Wednesday. I'm going to be 74, actually. Okay. You're 20 years and older than me. I know where. Pardon? You're 20 years older than me. I'm 54. How many years older? 20. Oh, okay. 20. Okay. Well, you know, I I realize where I am now, to where I was, and you got you got to do that in life. I mean, hey, there's some great people out there in their 80s. Mm -hmm. You know, I know them, but there's some guys out there in their 20s that are loose. You know, I, I you. You know, you just have to learn to live what you can do, you know, and that's what you get with age. You know, I remember when people would say, you know, uh, pick up that heavy thing, and I would, and then I'd hurt my back, and I'd suffer. Well, now, 
when I hit that 70, well, I, uh, probably 65, I just look at it and say, no. <laughs> and, and, you know, I realize what limitations you have. He is so bad beyond, he doesn't know where his limitation is because he doesn't understand anything. Yeah. I, I, and that, that have he, you seen, major problem. Major. He's a true empty suit. Have you seen the latest video of Hunter Biden uh, heckling or haggling with a hooker over cocaine? Or no, crack. I'm sorry. Methamphetamines. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, I think I saw. Uh, 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 there was something on Facebook that had some, you know, picture like that. Well, it's a whole yeah. video. It shows his face, and he's he's. Uh, you can hear him haggling with the uh, with the drug dealer about uh, what, and he's got it on the scale, and he's haggling over. Over how much is there and everything. I think it just released either this morning or last night. So you know what his dad's name is on his contact on his phone? Pedo. Pete. Yeah, the big guy. Pedo. No, Pedo Pete. P e d o Pete. P e t e is his dad's name on his phone. Somebody hacked into his phone. That's where all this stuff's coming from. They just hmm. got into his phone over the weekend. But his dad's contact in there is Pedo Pete. Hmm. Wow. This Thursday he well, was. See- go ahead. Oh, well, see, when anything that Biden or most Democrats come on, I, I do something a lot more interesting. I go outside and watch the grass grow. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't listen to none of his stuff, but all this stuff coming out with his son and stuff, I can't help but turn it off. Yesterday, you know, Bill Gates is involved in all this buying up America and the food and all this food sources and shit. One of his big grocery stores in the Netherlands burned up last night that he owns that he's a big partner in. So yeah. people in the world stage have had enough of this shit. Let's get off politics a minute. Let's talk Wisconsin because Wisconsin is, should be what our show is titled, Talking to Cheddarheads, because we talk to people from Wisconsin all the time because people in Wisconsin are like-minded like us Texans are. Mm-hmm. Y'all, Except y'all have a football team that at least I do support, and I will not support the Dallas Cowboys. Are you a Packer fan also? Well, this is going to be bad. Uh-oh. No, I, I, don't, I don't watch any professional sports whatsoever i just uh you know i enjoy all the people that do that because they're in the stands when i'm out <laughs> and they're not bothering <laughs> so are you a sports fan at all do you, you watch any sports at all no no the only sports i, I watch was when my kids are playing or my grandkids i i just hey i'm not saying it's bad i just not your cup i'm of not tea. into just it not your cup of tea but if you're the if you're a uh, Packer fan, you you've seen the uh, Thunder Man, yeah, with the with a hat and a V. Okay, that's that's one of my buddies. Really, he, yeah, he has those uh, hats. He makes those. Jeff Kalo makes those hats for every team in the league, and actually, I got his son. His grand, yeah, son, a turkey, and I have my own. I gotta see if yeah, I can right get there, it in. Huh? It's turkey hat. Yeah, I have a hat that he put together for me. <laughs> That's a turkey. There. So <laughs> now, who is this guy? He's uh, he he, he, he makes the the. Explain him. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Thunder Man. He's got the icicles yeah. on his beard. I'll, I'll pull up a picture of him. So you know who this guy is, then? Yeah, yeah. I know who he is. Okay. Well, Andy's a bigger Packer fan than me. Oh, yeah. I just like everybody but Dallas. Now, um, so he made you that hat special for you, huh? You got his grandson a turkey? Yeah. Yeah, I called the turkey in for him, for his son. That's, that's, that's fantastic. So you said that you are, you are a big waterfowl hunter. And then the turkey bug got you. Yes. Uh, well, the turkey bug actually started about in the 60s. And I was mediocre and you had to go to different states and all that stuff, and which I did. Okay. And I liked it. But when Wisconsin took off, it, it just, you know, I haven't, I haven't left that Wisconsin now for, I think it's six or seven years. I mean, why? I shoot. I shoot 10 birds a year in Wisconsin. Really? 
never leaving Wisconsin. How do you how do you shoot that yeah. many birds? You know that, how, that's the limit up there. No, the limit in Wisconsin is two hundred a year. Two hundred a year. I like. Yeah, that's the look on your face. I like this look. Yeah, yeah. People don't realize that, but we we apply for a tag, and then you could buy leftover tags, and you can buy two hundred tags if you would want to. And you know, like I say, I get eight, ten birds a year in Wisconsin. I have the only certified triple in Wisconsin. Three toms, one shot. What? How did that yeah. happen? Yeah. I, did I, you perp- Did you do this on purpose, or was this just happenstance? No, no. I know a lot of guys got them not on purpose. No, mine was on purpose. I had two lined up. And I was just going to pull the trigger, and there was a third one, and he started walking behind the other two. All three necks lined up. Boom. I got all three all in three one shot. Were they, and they all mature toms? All mature, mature toms. My goodness. And that was on Thursday. On Tuesday, I had gotten a double. <laughs> so I got five toms. With two shots in basically three days. I wrote a, I don't know if you've ever heard of Badger uh, magazine. It's a, another Watson magazine. Anyway, I wrote an, I write uh, articles for magazines and I put it in, a, it's in an article because people would say, you know, oh, what do you mean? You can't do that. Yeah, you can. I, I, I had five takes. I use them with two shots. Price of, yeah, the, the price, of, the price of lead now, you got to, you got to be yeah. careful. <laughs> you know, it costs a lot well, of the price of anything now with uh, with Biden in office, you got to conserve. You got to conserve wherever you can. Gas is through the roof. Oh yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy. Just but you know what? You know you're a lot younger than me. You got to live longer through it. I can just I'm going to spend all my money and then you know and you guys will take care of me. Yeah. <laughs> but you, I'm I'm going to be out flying with my gun in my hand sitting next to a tree with a smile no fire you you really yeah. want to rely on today's young people to take care of us because we're in trouble and i'm not talking about andy's generation in the mid-30s but you go to you can't even go to a store and get a kid that's between 16 and 22 to help you i must say and and, and not all young kids are bad because there's lots of great kids but 75 percent of these kids we have today have zero customer service at all they don't take no pride in anything they do. Well, yeah, pride and also having, you know, respect. Yeah. That's that's what it is. I respect the old people. You know, they need something. I'll, you know, I still open the door for for people. You know, but it's getting harder and harder at my age to find an older person to open the door <laughs> for. You know? But you go to you go to a fast food service, and if you get to the window. And the person there is in their 60s that's working there. A lot of those people are working because it gives them something to do. They don't have to work financially, but they want to work still. And those people take pride in everything they do. You see a 16 to 18-year-old kid that's working there. Not all of them because you run into some that are really nice and very respectful. But a lot of them, they don't give two craps about anything. They just want to get paid and walk out that door. They don't take any pride in what they do or the customer service. And, man, it's all over our country. So... I'm 54. In 20 years, I'm going to be screwed when I'm needing young people to help do shit for me. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a bragger. I got eight grandkids. Ain't none of mine. They all respect and say, please, thank you. And, uh, you know, they're they're all hunters. My uh, second oldest grandson got him a bear at 10 mm. years old. Wow. They're raised right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and they, they know what they're doing. And I'll tell you the, the, the kids that are in the outdoors, I don't care if they're fishing, uh, hiking, biking, hunting, whatever. You don't see those kids in a lineup too often at the No, station. those mass shooters and stuff are not kids that are alpha males. I've said that so many times. It's not an alpha male. The kid who has respect that goes to church, member of FFA, 4-H, hunts, fishes, plays sports, captain of football teams. 
Those kids aren't the ones getting in trouble. It's the kid that's in this room. Now, I've got two grandsons. My oldest grandson is about perfect. He might walk on water. He is never in trouble, never do anything. My younger one, he got in trouble at church the other day, Andy's youngest son, because he's gonna he's got to have a lot of alpha male in him, but he's also going to have a lot of fun in his life, I think. And that's the, that's the way you're supposed yeah, to be. Yeah. But he, he's going to be a throwback kid from the way kid boys used to be, I think. Oh, yeah. When I was younger, I didn't, you know, I didn't always walk on the side of the road. Sometimes I walked down yeah. the center. I mean, yeah. but that wasn't that uncommon then, you know? Oh, yeah. I I, I had my first motorcycle when I was 10. Jeez. Did, you ever get a, did you ever get a spanking yeah. growing up? Did I ever did do you get what, a spanking please? when you were growing up? A spanking? A spank. ass whipping. Did you get your ass whooped by your dad? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, every day. That's, you, yeah, and and if I did something in school and I got the piece of paper, you know, I didn't, you know, I gave it to my dad and he said, "What'd you do?" And I didn't tell him because I got a spanking <laughs> then. And then after we got back from school, you know, and my my dad didn't walk in and say, you know, "What are you doing to my kid?" My dad said, "What did my kid yes. do?" And I did it, so. You know, you you lived with it, and you know you 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 learned. You know, I'm not, you know, getting into this bullying stuff. I'm not for getting into bullying, but you know what? That's part of growing it up. Is. Yes, is learning that hey, if if somebody's going to push you, there's a point where you got to push back. Well, and I look at the lessons that come with bullying, and you know you. When there is no bullying, you can't socialize people. So these freaks, there are these weirdos, they just become more and more weird because now all of a sudden that jock can't be like, what the, what, what are you doing dyeing your hair purple? Like, what's with all the shit in your face? You can't do that anymore. So they just get more and more extreme. Whereas when you look at, the benefits of bullying, because I think that there are some. Now, obviously, bullying can go way too far, and we've seen that. We are getting way too politically correct here right now. No, we need more fucking bullies in the world. That's one of the problems we have. But it can go wrong. We've seen it go wrong. But we need. there is a place for bullying because it normalizes people. It's like, no, don't be a weirdo. I got bullied when I was in second or third grade. Yeah. Everybody you know goes what? through I, it. That's right, and I survived. And I have been an asshole my whole life, so I'm sure I have bullied a lot of people. I don't know if I physically bully people as much as I fucked with them and talk shit to them, and I still do that today because we too, we live in a soft world. But we need bullies. That's one of the problems we have. We don't need a kid going home and committing suicide because he got called a fat ass. What we need to learn is that kid that's a fat ass needs to lose some weight or whatever the problem is. Or get thicker skin. That's right. Grow up a little bit and realize that's part of life. And and the parenting is the biggest problem we have. And just like you said, when me and you were kids, if you got in trouble at school, you got your ass beat at home, and your dad never went to school and said, why are you picking on my kid? Could you imagine when you went to school if some parent would have went up there and bitched at the teacher for getting on to the kid for being an asshole? They'd have ran him out of the school. Yeah, yeah no. never happened, you know. But, but I do remember when I was a kid, you know, which was a long time ago, I remember those guys that, you know, they had tattoos and all that stuff and everybody was, you know, sort of what they are. Well, when I turned 70, look at there. Got him a tat. I got my <laughs> tattoo, I got my turkey. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. But did it hurt? Yeah, that was Well, it was pretty uncomfortable. It was Five hours. So what Five made hours. you, you're, you you get up to be 70 years old, and what makes you wake up one day and say, you know what, I want a tattoo today? Because I'm the turkey commander. You got to do that <laughs> shit. <laughs> now, we, our family all had them uh, because we're, we're German. Boss, boss is actually fuss. But in our family, all of the, the males get their family crest tattooed on their shoulder when they're... 18. Really, the, the family crest. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a German family crest. Voss is actually Fox. 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 Okay, Jeff, why don't we have a family crest? We're not German. Well, there you go. If we were Ita German, we I'm would. sure Italians had family crest. Oh. Well, we just have the mob, Andy. 
Well, yeah, Italian. Yeah, every you know, I, you know, but every place has got family now, press. You know, Italian. Yeah. You know. No, in Wisconsin, every so, you know, it, in Wisconsin, everybody has their their crest on their barns, don't they? Yes, yes, yeah. A lot of a lot of farms have theirs, or they make it into the uh, you know the uh, the wind those weather vanes. You know, wind things. They'll put it. Ooh, yeah, yeah. You're right. There's a, quite a few of them that have them, have that on and, their and farm. It's funny you see yeah, that in Iowa. A little bit in, in, in northern Missouri, Iowa, and Wisconsin, and Minnesota, but you don't see them in a lot of other places in the country. But everywhere in Wisconsin, all the barns have them on there, I noticed. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're hard. Well, yeah. You know. Yeah. You like beer and cheese. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That's, that's you know, everybody in Wisconsin, even myself, I was, you know, born in the city, but I... You know, I was rented out every summer to the farm doing chores and, you know, thrashing. A lot of people don't know what thrashing is. You know, you bring it in the grain and all that stuff. And that's hard work. I mean, that's that's why I knew I wasn't going to be a farmer because that's <laughs> armies hard work. You know? And it's seven days a week if you got them stupid cows. Now, you know? when did your family come over here? My grand. My great grandfather came over here sometime in the eighteen hundreds. Okay. So I'm what, fourth generation. I, but I, that, uh, I think that's very cool that even even, you know, four generations later, everybody's getting the, the family crest tattooed on their arm. I think that's very very uh commendable. Yeah, we still do it. My my uh my my oldest boss grandson. You know, he he, wa- he wants it right now, but he's only 14 and his mother won't wait. let him. <laughs> so, you got to wait. Listen, you're born yeah. into this family. Is, is, is his mom, uh, is she going to throw a fit when when the time comes or is she going to be, is she like, okay, you got to do it? She's a great lady. She is, she came from a, a wannabe hunter mm-hmm. family into a hunter uh-huh. family. And so when my grandson got his bear, I did a three-quarter mount. And uh, I didn't ask. I just put it up in his bedroom. <laughs> I first time she walked in the bedroom, there was a oh, oh, oh <laughs> look <thing> again. <laughs> but yeah, she's she's learned to. Uh, she does a good job. She she's learned to live with, you know, my son elk hunting and deer hunting and uh, you know just that's the way it is in our family. I, I looked at the map where Fon or Fondalac is. Fondalac. Fondalac. Is that right then, Fundalock? Nope. Still sound like an out of town. Fundalock. Yeah. Well, I am an out of towner. I did not realize there's a Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I thought it was Sheboygan where we were at in Michigan. Michigan. I did not realize there was a Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and a Sheboygan, Michigan. Well, yeah, but the Sheboygan brats come from Sheboygan. Wisconsin or Michigan? Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, okay. Wisconsin. Now yeah. let me ask you this. How do you how do you do your brats? Yeah. Do you boil them? No, no, because no, because they then they're boiled. No, you you got to start them low though. You gotta you can't have your fire real hot because then you burn the skin, and then you get all the little squirters out and you got grease on fire yeah, all over so the place. You got to start low, start them low and just cook them through, and then you can turn them up and and do your little fine grill. You know the marks or whatever they call them but you got to start them low because if you if you'd start them hot like i say it breaks the skin and then then you gotta because you want that grease to stay inside that skin and actually right cook the meat. okay so that's where i'm going wrong my fire must be too hot then i i gotta i gotta bump it down a little bit and cook it a little bit longer i thought fox boiled his right he 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 does, but then he finishes them on the grill. He puts the grill marks. He cooks them in the in the in the in the boiling water, and then he grills them on the grill. No, no, no I don't boiling water or nothing. No, I cook them on the grill. But I I I have the if it's a charcoal grill, I, I'm not over the over the coals. Gotcha. Uh, the the coals are on the side of the grill, and you're you know you're cooking it from 
from a fire, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know, so it doesn't get real hot. If you get it real hot, then it sticks to the stupid grate. We, right. And then, and, and, then, that's and then, like you said, you got all those little squirters everywhere, and you end up wearing most of the grease, yeah. and that's no good. So it's not like a hot link that you want to break the skin to bust. No. Because that's when you can tell when you no. got a hot link. What is the difference? Okay, from someone from Texas that's not a big brat eater, we, uh, we eat hot links down here. What is the difference between a brat? a brat, whatever you want to call it, and a freaking uh, hot link that we have. What's the difference? Or a, or a hot dog. Hot. Well, what, what happens with, with our brats up here is it's very coarse. It's a coarse grind. Okay. Where, where the, I, I remember the first time I, I traveled all over fixing machines all over the world. And one time I was in Chicago at the airport and they had brats. So I ordered one. And I took a bite out of it, and I was like, "What is this?" Because it's, it they're they're mealy because they're they're not ground so coarse. Ours are ground very coarse, and he, I think you get a better flavor. So, that, so that I, but what's the difference? It. So it's just coarse. It's ground coarse. It's coarse. The meat's more coarse then. It's right. the difference. Right. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's not like a hot dog inside. It's almost like uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's more like chopped. It's like chopped meat, not like ground meat, fine ground meat. I love hot links, and my favorite hot link is one of the cheapest ones out there. It's by a company called Bar S, and they and they make, and they just the real. I like them the hot links a lot. But I had a Johnsonville broth the other day that we bought, and it was spicy. And I'm gonna tell you right now, whoo hoo, that thing burned somebody's asshole at two degrees when it come out. Some bitch was hot. Second degree burns coming out of your ass. The hottest thing I've ever had, and it was a damn Johnsonville broth. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a hot person. Oh. I don't. Oof. I don't. You know. You know. You know why. You know why most Mexican food is really hot. Mm-mm. Because the meat was rotten, so they put spices in it. It didn't taste so bad. <laughs> yeah, Mexican food is great. I love it, but ugh, one you know. of the best Mexican foods, I, best Mexican restaurants I ever ate at was in. Uh, Egg Harbor or one of them places up by north of Green Bay, like Sturgeon Bay, somewhere up there on yep. in Door County. One of the best Mexican restaurants I ever ate at was up there. And I can't remember where the hell I we yeah. were now. Yeah, Door County's a, a you know, it's a great tourist trap, but it's it's a tourist trap, but it's not ultra goofy tourist. I don't know. It was in Sturgeon Bay's where Whatever we were. I love I I love Door County. It's a beautiful area up there. Oh yeah, Wisconsin is. You know, I've been in all fifty states and a lot of different countries, and uh, you know, Wisconsin, we got it all. We got we got weather. If you don't like it in the morning, you can complain about it, and it'll be different in the afternoon. You know, it. it you know, it's got everything. We got we got deer, uh, bear. Uh, you know, we got this. They call it an elk herd, but we we got some elk here. But you know, and and we do have duck hunting. Our duck hunting actually changed. We used to be in, you know, when I was younger, we were in the Mississippi Flyway, and Wisconsin's no longer in it. The Mississippi Flyway is Dakota. It it no. shifted it shifted you away know, so, from you. Yeah, yeah, and they they don't know why. I mean, we still have duck hunting. It's not like we don't get ducks, but we don't have the you know, hundreds and hundreds and a flock of northern birds crossing Wisconsin anymore. Just not there. What do you think you happened? Know? Do you think uh, hunting pressure back in your generation? Do you think farming practices changed? I I don't know. You know, that's what some people say that, you know, but you still pick corn. I, I don't know. I, I Nobody's really ever, if you will, you know, said what it was, but more birds are flying Dakotas now than Wisconsin. I don't know why. Now your turkey numbers—they're doing—they're booming, aren't they? They're doing very well. No, no, no they're our, down also. Our turkey, no, our turkey numbers are going down just like every other state. Yeah, it's it's frightening. I mean, yeah, we, uh, you know, and I'm not a good guy to be talking about turkey numbers going down, shooting ten a year, but I work hard at it. And I mean, I work, you know, we have a, we have a, about a six and a half week spring season 
and it's it's very complicated. We got different zones and different time periods, but if you know how to run the system, you can, you know, like I say, you could buy two hundred tags if you want to. But you know, last year I saw probably as many Toms and Jakes as I saw heads. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's not good. That's that's, just, a, that's not yeah. a good recipe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the optimum flock is 15 to 20 hens per tom. Really? That many? And I saw as many. Yeah, I saw as many toms as I did hens. That's not good. Yeah, that's tough. Well, um, so I wonder because we have really seen a a big drop off in turkey numbers here in Texas. And then we also, we waterfowl hunt. We're only about two hours away from Oklahoma, southwest Oklahoma. And when we first started hunting up there, we would see winter flocks of two to 300 turkeys. And now right. you're yep. lucky to see a dozen in a winter flock. Where did all those birds go? Yeah. I truly believe it's the pre- predators mm-hmm. because right now, you know, through the, the woke and the crazy people and all that, nobody likes fur. Even though it keeps it warm, nobody likes it. Okay. But nobody's trapping. I mean, you you can't anybody that traps now trap. It's a hobby for them because you can't even pay for the gas right. to to put crap out. So, you know, I see more coyotes and foxes and raccoons and I mean, and they all eat the eggs. Mm-hmm. And most of the, a lot of the states, you know, we reintroduced the turkeys and the predators, the the owls and the hawks and the coons and everything they didn't know what a turkey was and they didn't feed on them that much now i mean i had a uh, i take i actually take the hide off of my turkeys that i harvest and i put them on the decoys okay and and i'm not knocking any decoy manufacturers because they send me decoys and stuff but you know nobody can replicate what god made and nobody can get that feather hue that's in the real turkeys. And, uh, you know, I, I use those and I was, I use those decoys. I had an Eagle come down and land about 30 feet from my decoy. And I thought, fucker's going to rip my decoy out. And sit there, he sit there with his cock head looking at it. And then he flew away. So then I'm sitting in my, my blind and I'm going, Wait a minute! If he dropped a feather, I'm going to have an eagle feather. And I I picked up my decoys and I left. <laughs> <laughs> so what's that process look like? What, yeah, what do you, you just you just flesh them out and then uh, cure cure the 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 hide underneath. Yep, I yep I do a I do a pelt and then I use twenty mule team borax, the you know the laundry yep. stuff, and just sprinkle it there and it dries out the hides and. You know, it's like a tanned hide. That how many seasons do you get out of it doing this way? I got my my one. Tom's probably on his uh, he's on his fifth season already. Now I get pretty careful if it's raining and stuff. As I don't take them out too much in the rain, but you can get them wet and you know just dry them yeah. out. And yeah, what they'll they'll work. What uh, what do what do you? I mean, because your your typical year, do you deal with a lot of rain? Is that something that you have to contend with up there? Because here in Texas, you know, it's it's more or less it's going to be dry during turkey season. Oh no, we I've already uh, during the youth season, I've already had to shovel a spot so I could get it for the for the kids to hunt with snow. I mean oh. snow. I'm talking three feet of Jeez. snow. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And, and it rains a lot, you know. I don't know if you got a chance to, uh, you know, Google the Wisconsin Turkey Commander, mm-hmm. but uh, I get into it big. Uh, I don't know. If you, you guys know what yeah, that is? Know. Yeah, I make. Mm-hmm. That's an old Indian call, and I make I make a lot of them for for you know all my my first time hunters. I make a call out of their first bird. Oh, that's very cool. So they have something to take with them. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's forever. This is this is one of my uh, uh, turkey fan. Let me see if I can get it in there. Yep, there it is. There's a your spur necklace. Yeah, yeah. You see the necklace? I made that for my wife, but she won't wear it. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't. They just don't appreciate fine uh, fine craftsmanship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So below yeah. all of that, is that all of the beards from from the turkeys that you've killed over the year? Below the necklace? No, no. There's only, I think there's only like fifty on there. I got 155 turkeys. That's that's what you're at. Yeah, I'm at 155. What's the most that you've you've got in a single year? Ten. Ten is the mo- Ten's the max. Yeah. But you can kill 200, right? And now, now, would you have shot an eleven yeah, or eleventh or or ten? You you ran out of time, or is ten just your number? No, no, I ran out of time. I I hit ten, I think three or four years, but I just ran out of time. I mean, there was no, uh, you know, I just didn't have any more time, or or, uh, uh, yeah, I just ran out of time, mostly. There it goes. Um, what do you think, have you always hunted over decoys or, or back in your early days? Cause there's, there's some controversy. People think that, you know, maybe you shouldn't use decoys. Some guys say, yes, use decoys. Some guys say no. Cause then the bird, you know, they, they, they don't hang up as often. What do you, what do you think? Okay. One of the thing, and you mentioned something about hanging up the bird, hanging up. Which way do you face your decoy? Uh, I face it towards me. So away, I, I face it away from where I think he's going to come. Boy, you're one of the first, you know, I give you, you're going to get a big head, but you're one of the first people. You, you always have the decoy facing you because if the Tom thinks the decoy sees him, the hen, right. he's going to start strutting and he's not going to come in because the natural thing is the hen goes to the tom, mm-hmm. and and I've actually did it in the field. I had a, it was a really this bird had an ugly fan, and I put my decoy up and I faced it out, and he just strutted and strutted and strutted and wouldn't come in. Mm-hmm. Next day, the decoy around, came right in, could have shot him. Next day, faced the decoy out, strut strut, he didn't come in. Next day he came in and it was the only time I saw, so I shot him. It was ugly, but, <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, that's, but as the, if you will, the season progresses, I use less and less decoys by the end of the season. I'm not using a decoy myself. Right. Because you want them to, to search, seek you out more or, or, or do you do it just because you think that, well, the birds that are left have probably seen my tricks. Yeah, they've seen it. Uh, plus, you know, Joe Blow and uh, everybody in the world had decoys out, just like Colin. I, the the major that's where the wing bone comes in because not that many people use the wing bone. Mm-hmm. It's a different pitch, different sounding call later in the season. I use it all season, but you know, the 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 main problem in turkey hunting is people call too much. Too much. Too much. If that bird is coming at you. I don't care if it's you know five steps forward, four back. You take your call and you put it down. That's it. That's it. Because once he's committed, turkeys, you know, everybody thinks turkeys are smart. Turkeys are a dumb bird. They're wary. Okay. But they're spooky. Yeah, very wary, spooky. And if you keep calling, all of a sudden, if, you know, you keep going, hello, hello, hello. Even that turkey's going to go, yeah, and they're going to walk away. So, and also when you're calling, you take the chance of a hen coming out and taking him. And if if that turkey's got a choice between a live hen and you, the live hen's going to win every time. And the guy, oh, I called him off a live hen. Oh, <laughs> that turkey decided he didn't want that live hen anymore. You didn't do you didn't do shit. Right. So, um. The the one thing that I have I got lucky last year is I had hens that came to me and she brought 
she was aggressive. The hens were actually sprinting to my decoys. And I don't know what I, I don't know if I invaded her bubble, if that was her Tom. And now all of a sudden there's another hen introduced. So, but it was actually the hen that got him killed. Two hens came sprinting at me and he was like, son of a bitch, where are they going? And he followed yeah. them right to his See, demise. A lot of the times, if I have, when that, when the Tom's uh, hand up, he's got all the hens with them. Yeah. You call to the hen because there's a boss Tom. You know what boss Tom is. There's also a boss hen. Right. And if you, if you can piss her off and the way to piss them off is if that boss hen is, buk, buk, then you, buk, buk, you mimic her. And all of a sudden that's an insult. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden she's going to come along and yeah, who comes behind her? Do, do you try to cut her off whenever she's doing the whenever she's doing that putt putt? Do you try to like get, catch it to where you cut her off a little uh, bit to kind of no, insult I don't, her? Don't cut a hand. Off. No, I don't cut a hand off. I'll let her do her own thing. You know, she'll go through a. Bah, 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 bah. Then I'll just bah, 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 and I'll just mimic exactly what her hall call is. Mm -hmm. And you know, I guess I've had good luck. I got a lot of birds. You know. <laughs> Turkey hunting is, and then it, it's it, yeah. it's fat it's it's so different than anything else out there. And I don't elk hunt or anything like that, so I can't speak to that. But <clears throat> I waterfowl hunt a lot, and it's it, it's more of like a one on one mono e mono type of situation versus waterfowl hunting where it's big flocks and you know all that stuff. It's more it's more intimate and it's more personal. Turkey hunting is to me. You, it's, it's a, yeah, you, you can't, uh, you know, to this year, the hundred, I picked up my 155th turkey and my hand was shaking Still shaking because I worked, I worked that bird for almost 45 minutes before it came in. Wow. And, and it's just that, that timing and you get all, I mean, I get nuts. I'm, I'm. Yeah, people have been in a blind with me and just, you know, they, 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 they look at me, but, but I've done everything I've, you know, I've done, I shot a moose with a bow and arrow on the ground at 30 feet Oof. and the moose ran past me at, uh, at about a foot. Oh, did you think, so did you think was he was going to get you? Well, no, he just, he was pissed. I stuck an arrow in no. him. So he was just running away. He ran right past me. They're seven feet at the shoulders. Wow. If you maybe if you'd understand this. If I would have had hemorrhoids, they'd have been in the food. <laughs> but you 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 weren't afraid that that uh, moose was going to run you over. Were you trying to get out of the way or what? Hey, it happened so fast. I I was almost a bite. <laughs> Here, here's a little rock. Uh, Here's a little bear that I took at uh, 12 yards with a ball. And does any of this, uh, you get shaky after any of these, or, or it's just kind of one of those things? No. Oh, yeah. Well, not, not as... Not like turkey hunting? I don't know. You know, I was more excited. Well, the moose was pretty pretty high on the list, but I guess I was more... I, I get more excited with a turkey than anything else. I mean, it's just a... I don't know why. Yeah, now, what do you do? do are you more of the uh, <laughs> sit in one spot camp, or do you run and gun? No, I'm pretty much uh, a sit in one spot. I mean, I'll. I mean, my record is sixteen and a half hours in in the Oof, blind. That's a long day. Yeah, and people say I am a hyper person. People say, "How do you do it?" Now, I, don't, I don't know. I just. I get totally, you know, it's my, it's my charger. You know, I, I just sit there and I watch chickadees or I watch everything. Matter of fact, I, I, I did an article on, uh, uh, it was called the field, which was a field that I sat in. And I think I heard one gobble that day, but that whole day I reflected on my son's first deer there, uh, a buddy of mine's first turkey in that blind, uh, me shooting coyotes in the blind, me shooting deer and turkeys and, you know, just that, you know, same thing you would get in 
you probably have some favorite duck spots that you sit in blinds. Yes. You know, if you think back to those days, I mean, you know, of course I'm old. Some, some of the people that were that hunted with me are already in heaven. Yeah. We, uh, we've got some property that is right next to where I first started turkey hunting. And when I walk past it, I can see where I used to turkey hunt and, that's always fun to, cause you just kind of think I shot my first turkey down there, first turkey that I called in, and you know, it's it's fun walking, walking down memory lane. Yeah, and sort of the the tie together of the uh, the turkey commander. I was working with a guy called Phil Robertson, yep, duck commander. Yeah, and he was he was at Oshkosh, at a at a. This was before he was rich and famous, mm-hmm. but anyway. Uh, on the way home, one of my buddies said, "You should be the you should be the turkey commander," and that's how that's how the Wisconsin turkey commander started. It wasn't any big somebody voted me in or whatever. Just it was a thing. A couple buddies said, "Hey, why don't you do that?" I picked it up and been running with it for twenty some years. Oh, maybe over that third. Nate, you also do a veteran hunt, don't you? Or you take veterans hunting? Oh, I. Oh, I do veterans. I do special people. Uh, I had one gentleman this year. He had a battery pack with electrodes to his brain wow. because he had uh, brain cancer, and uh, that was the best bird of the that was the best bird of the whole year. And and it was a Jake, but it just uh, it just. Uh, I mean, I was the property owner thought I was nuts. I was jumping around like crazy. So, but yeah, I do, you know, I, I do a lot of those hunts and, and, uh, you know, that Jay Link from the Link Jerky, you know, uh, that I met him on a, on a, uh, bear hunt where I donated my bear tag to a special kid. Uh, in Wisconsin, you can donate your tags to any, you know, uh, kids under 16 and uh, there's quite an organization in wisconsin called child's wish not make a wish but child's wish and she does she does hunts all over actually i think she does them down in texas too but for special kids and stuff like that and i met jay and and uh that was that was a great hunt in wisconsin it takes eight years to get a kill tag for a bear wow you have to apply eight years, eight years. before you get one and yeah, and she gets 40 Wisconsin bear hunters to donate their tags to special kids every year. That's awesome, man. That's that's her. But yeah, but yeah, veterans are are great and you know the the kids and uh I had a guy 87 years old with one leg. That was that was quite a 87 hunt. years old? Wow. Yeah, with one leg. It'd be hard to yeah, get along was, with one uh, leg when you're 17, much less 87. He lost his leg when he was 14. Wow. All his life. And uh, I don't know if you guys fish, but, uh, you know, perch, yellow perch, that's the ultimate fish in Wisconsin. I mean, every bar in Wisconsin always has a fish fry on Friday night, and it's perch. Mm-hmm. You know, I went, I went fishing with this guy. We got 31 really nice perch, and we're sitting on the end of a pontoon boat. You know how big that is, right? So the old guy, he got 25, I got four, and my other buddy got two. <laughs> so he got us out of shit. <laughs> I tell you, you know, we've had a lot of uh, veterans on the podcast, and the outdoors is an amazing, uh, it's an amazing healing process for a lot of people. If they'll take of advantage life. of it. I mean, just go outside, get a little bit of sunshine, be in mother nature, uh, and just enjoy it. Forget about your troubles for a little bit. Especially when you live up north where I, you live, where it's nice. It's, it, you know, what, what's your high today? 75? Uh, yeah, I think today, but today it might get all the way up to 80, wow. I think. But, all the way up to yeah. 80. But we get, you know, we get the dog days in August. We get a hundred when we get a hundred degrees in in Wisconsin, it is nothing but miserable. Yeah, like plain. Got to tell you, one of my stories was one of my my uh, veterans. He had uh, 
I think they called a pulmonary thrombosis. His lungs were literally turning to cement. I think it was Agent Orange or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I took him out hunting. They were turkey hunting. And all of a sudden I looked down and he was on a, a oxygen tank. You ever read, you know, you know, sitting there, you're looking at stuff. So I'm reading on this big tag and it says, do not have, do not, you know, have any flame. Do not have any fire within da, da, da. And I'm going, we're going to shoot a shotgun. <laughs> I wonder, you know, I wonder if things, this thing's going to blow up, you know. So we're sitting. Anyway, I call the turkey in. Boom, he shoots it. And, of course, I run out and grab the turkey. I call it chicken life. Mm -hmm. You know, they flop around. Sometimes you could lose a bird, you know, so I grabbed the bird. So anyway, I walk in. He looks at me and said, ooh, ooh, ooh. Did you, did you see? On, on the tank it says, hey, you know, we're not supposed to, you know. I said, I've been looking at that SOB for three hours. <laughs> we died, did we? It all worked out. We're fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, hey, when the, when the Lord turns the page, whatever you're doing, and you're on that page, you're gone. So, that's right. I'm a firm believer in that also. Might as well, you, you need to go live your life. Too many people don't live their lives like they should. You can't take money with you. You know, one of the, one of the guys that we had on that he's a wounded warrior, but he said, you know, when it's your day to live, nothing can kill you. And when it's your day to die, nothing can save you. Correct. And you know, I'm a Christian and, and you know, not, not saying Ron, I'm not afraid of death, but to say, it's a lot easier because I know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. So, I don't. I'm scared of the pain. Yeah. I don't want to have a painful death. I'm not scared of dying. I just hope I'm a pussy. I hope it's an easy way. I hope it's in my sleep or you know I die instantly. I don't want to be pain. I don't want to go through a bunch of pain doing it. But I know where I'm going to. And so many people don't live their lives, or they 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 live in fear all the time they're going to die. That's not living. Well, okay, I'll share something. 1992. I had this little lump on my neck. They whacked her off. They gave me six months to live. Oh, wow. Stage three lymphoma. Mm -hmm. I was at the Sloan Kettering. I was at the Mayo. I was at every place. And, you know, the Lord didn't choose to put me on the page that day. So so I, I, I've had it, I don't want to say easier, but I've had it. I've had a better outlook than most people because, you know, you know you're going to die. But when somebody walks up to you and looks you in the face and said you're going to die, mm -hmm. you you look at life a lot different, you know. And uh, actually, uh, you know, I'll keep in touch because uh, in a few uh, actually months, I'm going to have a book out. It's called Living on Death Row. Oh, that would be oh, very good. cool. You said 92 yeah. you, were, you were given six months to live? 30 years ago. Thir 1992. 30 years ago. They only missed it. They, they missed it by over 30 years. Yeah. Well, and then, you like this, last February, which was the 30-year anniversary, now I got prostate cancer. Oh. What, what's the outlook yeah. on that like? I, I guys, all those old guys are going to get it anyway. Right. So. Uh, so, I... You know, it's it's a thing you got to, you know, the saying that the veteran said, but my saying is, if you worry today about what's going to happen about tomorrow, you just lost today. That's true. It's very true. Yeah. That's why you spent 16 it's hours. That, that's how you spent 16 hours out there because you appreciate what's out in them woods. And yeah. so many of us don't appreciate anything. We don't, I mean, we get, we're too caught up into today sometimes to not depreciate what today is about. Yeah. It's just, you know, just, I, I'm not, you know, have fun, you know, screw everything else. No, I, it just, you, you learn to appreciate and, and I did it, you know, when my first bout, you know, I had this guy walk up to me and he had this, you know, he was, he looked just like a Texan with a jacket and a big hat and everything you know and he walked up and when when you've had you've had cancer you go to stage you get pissed off why me and all and i was in a pissed off stage so he looked at me and he said someday you're gonna say this is a blessing mm -hmm. 
And of course, looking at him, I was in a pissed off mood. I looked at him, I looked right at his eye, and I said, what the hell you got, brain cancer? And he looked at me and he said, yes. Uh-oh. Oops. Yeah, get out of that one. You just walk away. <laughs> yeah. There's not much you can say to get yeah. out of that one. Yeah, you got your foot in your mouth up to your knee. So you walk. <laughs> you know. so, Matter of fact, I do, sir. Yeah, you know, so, yeah, gives gives it a different attitude. You know, it's... Yeah. Eh. Wrong, uh, Jeff's dad, my grandfather, passed away from uh, lung cancer. And okay. you know he battled it back and forth for several years. He also had uh, leukemia. So, but he always, when, when he came back from like treatment days, he was a totally different person because he, he'd always come back and he'd be like, you know, you don't have to look very far to find somebody that's got it way worse than you do. Right. Yes. Yeah. There's... There's, yeah, you, know, you, you look at the guy who went fishing with all his life. He didn't have another leg. Right. How would you like to walk? Uh, you know, if people say, well, I could never do that. Yeah, you, you can. can. When, when you're there and, and it's your turn, you know, you got anything inside you, you just go, okay, that's, that's the cards I got dealt. So let's play the ham, you know? Yeah. So I'll give, you a little, I'll give you a little story. This, uh, this is a semi hunting story. Uh, I took experimental chemo, and it was sort of like like an aspirin. I mean, I never got sick. It was not a big deal. But anyway, my oncologist called my wife while I'm in the middle of this program. And he says, uh, you know, I want to talk to Lauren. And she said, well, uh, you, you know, I'll, uh, I'll have him call you when he gets back. And, I, and he said, well, just have him call me from where he's at, you know. So she hee-hawed around. Finally, she said, well, he's in the Shoshone Valley mule deer hunting on horseback. <laughs> yeah. My oncologist called me a dumb SOB, by the way. <laughs> in the middle of his chemo. <laughs> so, that's to do. yeah, that's, that's. Yeah. I had a fishing, I had a hunting trip. What do you want from me? Pardon? Just, you just got to tell him, you know, I had a hunting trip. What do you want from me? I'm not just going to sit around here and wait for this to well, kill yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, you set your priorities, you know, you just, hey, that's, uh, you know, I've uh, had the same wife for 53 years, and she knows when the turkey season opens, she sees me in, turkey season opens here in April, and it closes first week of June, she knows she ain't going to see me for two months, <laughs> because she's a, she's a night person, you know, and if I, Turkey hunting here in the late, the later in the season, you're getting up at two o'clock in the morning. Yes, right. And, and I mean, yeah. what time does it? Can you hunt in the afternoons in Wisconsin in the evening time? Yeah, you can. Yes, when we first started, it was only mornings okay. and only five days. Now we can hunt seven days a week, uh, half an hour before, half an hour after sunrise. And I mean, what time does it get dark there this time of year? You're getting dark later and later. Oh, late, yeah. Uh, at the end, of, I think, I think it's eight o'clock is when it closes. Yeah, eight o'clock at night. Yeah, you know, and open like you know, like five forty-five in the morning and eight o'clock at night. Do Do you hunt every single day of the turkey season? Yes, except I have this stay, saying: high wind, stay in. Stay in, because. They're not going to move. They're not going to move. And, you know, oh, I'll run and gun and I'll find them in some valley or whatever. Yeah, and the birds will be out of the valley before you get there. So if it's really high wind, they don't mind the rain. They don't mind snow. But if it's wind, they don't like the wind because it's too much movement. Right. They can't pick and up the It's predator. too spooky for them. Right. And it's too spooky for them. And they're just going to they're gonna haul up. I've, I've seen them already, uh, uh, you know, when I'm driving around. I'll see a bird that never lo- left the roost all all day. Wow! Because it was just too windy. Too windy. Yeah, because I got a lot of uh, I I, re- I I've heard I haven't done that much hunting in Texas, but you guys have like leases they call them, mm-hmm. right? You lease land. Mm-hmm. You don't have the. You know we have acres and acres of public yeah, land. We don't have much of that in here. Wisconsin. Yeah, I know. I heard that, but. I hunt a lot of private land, so a lot of my lands 
you know, I don't even scout much anymore because if if the topography and everything stays the same, the turkeys are going to come in the same spot. A bit well, that one stand I got, a, we probably shot 50, 60 turkeys out of one stand. Right. And it's a, you know, it's a, it's a plywood stand that we built 30 years ago. You know. Yeah, that's the thing about Texas is you better you got to kind of compensate for windy days because we get a whole lot of wind out here, and it it's tough. It's yeah. way it's very it's a it's a totally different ball game, totally different uh, factors that you have to think about, and it's not easy. I hate I hate windy days. They're my least favorite least favorite time to hunt is on those extremely high wind days because you know that. If you do get a bird, he's going to be that much more on edge because the grass is swaying back and forth, and he can't really get a bead on where a predator might be, and it's a it's a totally different ball game. Yeah, they're 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 just too too spooky in the wind. So, I don't I don't go up much in the wind. I think uh, you know we had with the U season, the special seasons, about uh, seven weeks. I had, I think I missed two days mm-hmm. in the seven weeks. So let me ask you yeah, this, where and we're going to start wrapping up here because we've already had you on an hour here, okay. and I know that you've got other things to do. What do you think? There's this new, uh, there's this new fancy tech technique, uh, turkey reaping. People take the hide behind the decoys and they sneak up on them. Where do, where does Lauren sit on that? Okay, I I would never stop anybody from a hunting process, if you okay. will. Okay, which is another way of hunting. You know, I lived. I'm older than you. I lived through the, through the crossbow when when, I, the, when the compound bow came right. out. That was it. You know, hunting was terrible. So no, it's it's okay. The only thing that I would and I can't do it. I got a fake knee, so I can I ain't crawling anymore. <laughs> uh, but I really would like them to have to wear an orange vest. Right. Yeah. That. That's the only thing that I would I would request because uh, I did some studies and there's quite a few people have been have gotten shot. There's a Re- there's a video that I'll send to you and there's a guy he's hunting he's hunting public and he's sitting he's sitting at the base of a tree and he's got uh, I think he's got his decoy spread it's two it's like two hens and a, a tom or something like that. Yeah. There's a there's a natural draw about. 40 yards out from where he is and coming up the draw, he sees this full, he sees a fan and then he sees a red and white and blue head and it's creeping up over the draw and it gets to 30, 40 yards and he pulls a trigger and it's a man behind a full turkey fan, red and white head. And he ended up, he ended up shooting the guy. I think he just peppered him. He didn't kill the guy, but I mean, here he was, he was just sitting at the base of a tree, wasn't hurting anybody. And then another guy sees his decoys and, and putting out a putting out a, a, a Tom decoy or a Jake decoy on public land is a little sketchy to begin with. You know, you run the risk of somebody mistaking what it is. But yeah, the guy encroached on where he was hunting and he shot. Yeah, yeah, that's well, it would be like just going deer hunting and you know, putting a set of horns on your head and then putting a deer and, and, and then be mad at the guy that shot you. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not, it's not a good thing because, you know, and, and, uh, real quick when you're talking, you're talking deer. I do that too. Oh, look at there. Look at all those. My goodness, you're a busy man. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, but 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 there again, I don't want to stop people from hunting. I mean, that's that's the thing. You know, it's just like uh, the people that don't like the AR, they don't like this gun, they don't like that gun. When you give a little bit, you're going to lose a lot. Right. And uh, the the reaping, you know, I. Fine. If, if you want to do it, fine, but do it safely. Safely. Yeah. I, I have a real problem on public land. It just it scares me. There's too many people that don't have a whole lot of sense running around the woods, and you know if we're putting now they've got you know it's, it, it's a recipe for disaster in my mind. Right. 
there's something's going to happen. Now in Wisconsin, if you're in a public on public land and you're in a turkey tent, mm -hmm. you have to have an orange top on your tent. You have to, I think it's 144 inches or whatever orange on your tent. Some sort of marking device to where people can see you. Right. Right. So Wisconsin's one of the safest states in the United States, by the way, for for any hunting, well, turkey hunting. I think it's because people grew up hunting out there. I think that I think that other states, you know, there's there's a lot of people that uh, didn't grow up that way. Right. Well, quick story. I got so many of them, but my son-in-law married my oldest daughter. Asked me if I take him turkey hunting. Well, of course, you know. Huh? So I take him out turkey hunting, and in comes these two toms. And and the way we were set, I couldn't see exactly what he could see, and he, you know, there's birds. And, you know, it, it got a beard. Yeah, well, take the one with the longest beard. And just as that bird came out, he shot it, rolled it, perfect shot, you know. And so I grabbed the bird and I come in and he's shaking, you know. And I said, well, yeah, a lot of people get really excited. He looked at me and he said, well, I never shot a shotgun before. <laughs> In my family, I didn't even ask him. Right. You know, he was nervous, so I knew he shot guns and stuff, but he had never shot a shotgun in his right. life. So his first shot was 25 pound turkey. <laughs> but, Jeez. but uh, you know, to me, my, you know, my grandsons, my, my son, I mean, it just, you were born with it, you yeah. know, which goose hunt. Real quick, when my son was with me goose hunting, I mean, I, I think it was so small. I think I carried him in my gamekeeper when he when he got tired. But anyway, we're on this ridge, and here land some geese out there, and they're you know they're like two hundred yards, one hundred fifty yards out, you know. And so we're sitting there, and my son goes, "You gonna shoot at him, Dad?" And I said, "No, they're too far away." He said, "Well." Don't you have the twenty two? <laughs> <laughs> Not today, son. I, he knew the difference of which gun he had to use. Yeah. Yeah. I can reach out and touch him. I don't know what you're talking about, Dad. They make a twenty two. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. So so when is your book coming out? Uh, it should be we got the the book number um, and the the first copy if you will is going to be printed and we're going to go out and see if we can find anything different from it but you know you talk about you know the large purpose my oncology nurse in my first uh, uh, journey with cancer she was a wannabe writer and she actually started well we actually started writing this 25 years ago but it was like you know Thirty thousand dollars to print a book. Now you, it's like, it's like three hundred dollars. Yeah, and and it's not much. you can order. Yeah, yeah, you can order books as you want them. So, so, uh, so we're figuring she's she's actually got like a book signing thing set up in September tenth, I think, that or something like that. So we figure everything will be out by then. Well, very cool. Well, we would love to have you back on oh, uh, later in the fall and. Uh... Talk a little bit more about your book and tell some more stories if you'd be up for it. Sounds good. Sure. I appreciate it. This is a fun time. Perfect. Well, Lauren, we appreciate it very much. God bless you. Uh, good luck on your prostate cancer. And uh, yep. keep we'll, on keeping on. We'll sir. talk to you in a couple months. Okay. God blessings. Have a good one, guys. Right. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye, sir. Lauren Voss. It's pretty interesting. 87-year-old guy with one leg. Got some grit to him. I'm telling you, a lot of grit. That's living though, man. Eighty-seven years old, born in nineteen thirty-five. That's crazy. Yep, he was Reese's age during World War II. Seen a lot of things. Yep, a lot of changes in the world. Whew. <clears throat> did you set your uh, thermostat at eighty today? I did not. Did you know you're supposed to? I actually cranked the mini split in there down a little bit. Did Did you know that though? Mm -mm. Oh yeah, they're they're calling for blackouts today. Rolling blackouts in Texas. Here. Well, I don't know. I'm on the hospital grid, so I'm not going to get blacked out. You might. No. They won't really turn the hospital off. But that's the state of affairs. And guess who jumped right on it? Good old Beto. Beto, do he's, your part. 
He says that this is exactly what the problem is with having Abbott, and he could fix these solutions. Democrats are the reason we're having these fucking problems, all their green energy shit. You just wait. Solar? The Dutch farming strike yes. is coming here. Yep. Solar if they and get, If they wind. get some of these uh, Green New Deal shit passed, yep. you just hold on to your fucking hat because it's coming. People here have had enough. Had enough. But solar power and wind energy doesn't work. We well, need. there's a place for it. It'd be a nice supplemental a type supplement. Supplement, but it is not enough to carry the grid. These people don't yeah. understand that shit. And then they, they're so stupid, they throw all these electric cars on there. Yeah, that's the big thing. I mean, that's the fucking, you're throwing all these electric cars on. Now we already you, don't have enough gas, now you electricity. Even, now you can't even charge your fucking Tesla. Yeah. And they're showing lines of people waiting. Can you imagine waiting in line to get a gas? Like me and you go buy gas. At least once you get up there, you're out in 10 minutes. Right. Your car's filled up in 10 Takes minutes. Takes you 30 minutes to yeah. charge to get to the next place. Fuck, it's more than that. Some of them are two and a half hours. And they say if you pull a trailer on an electric car. Forget about yeah, it. Yeah, no, you have no energy. I mean, there's none. It don't work. I mean, people just get. We've let too many people tell us too long how we need to live our life. Life was a lot more, a lot simpler 30 years ago. And a guy could fix his car at home. Yep. Can't do that anymore. Shit, no. They got it fixed where you can't do a damn thing. But that's even on like gas powered stuff. Ed was always bitching yes. that he couldn't. Uh, they've, they've made it, it used to be simple. Everybody could work on their car when it was just a typical six banger, eight, right. you know, V8. I don't know how to hot work rod. on a car. Well, I don't either. Yeah, I do. Take it to John. Take, but, but I mean, what happens when? What happens when John's gone out of business? John's a local guy. John got he does our uh, all our mechanic work, but and, and Jeff Cersey and Mundy does it. But the guys mean, are old. The guys are old. Yeah. Who's gonna fill in? Sixties and seventies. Yeah. I mean, shit. I can't fix that stuff anymore. Anymore, you never could. You at least had the opportunity to work on it. You at yeah, least you had the can. opportunity to fuck it up. And your now life. You, now you got to <clears> put a computer on it. That's right. Everything's got to have a computer. Oh, the world we live in now. All right, anyways, y'all, thank y'all very much. This is up next week. Uh, check us out on YouTube at the Big Honker uh, podcast page and check out the First Family of Waterfowl. Go to stanfieldhunting.com, go to shop, and you can buy sh swag from the um, First Family of Waterfowl and other Stanfield Hunting and Big Honker podcast gear and stuff we have for sale. Get ready for hunting season. Uh, before we know it now. Yep, we'll be fixing on vacation again. Last one of the year. Just sad. Thank y'all very much for listening to us. God bless y'all. Have a great week. Go check out all of our great sponsors before you leave. Go check out Double T British Kennels, Ducks Unlimited, Dirty Duck Coffee, Stanfield Hunting Outfitters, Bangtail Whiskey, uh, Alpha Outdoor Specialties, Looking Glass Duck Club Podcast, Lucky Duck, Shin Gear Waiters, Gundog Outdoors, Pacific Call, Dive Bomb Industries, and the one and only Boss Shot Shows.